Hello everyone! Uh, if you ask a hundred different people uh, who was the greatest pirate ever, you will get a lot of different answers. But if you ask a hundred chess players uh, who was the greatest pirate ever, uh, I believe the, the answer will be unanimous. As uh, 81 years ago, on this day, in 1936, uh, one of the, well, not one of the, the greatest pirate ever was born in Riga, Latvia, Mikhail Nekemevich Tal. And, uh, well, as the chess world has seen as, uh, its fair share of pirates, but only one pirate ma managed to, to pillage his way all the way to the world champion championship title. And, uh, well, uh, he did the grace us with, uh, with tons of amazing games. I mean, uh, games like these is uh, exactly the reason why I never include Tal in my sorcery series, as uh, pretty much every Tal game is a, pu is a pure sorcery, so... Uh, definitely quite a guy and uh, as you all know well not all of you but uh, many of you know he's uh, my favorite player and uh, definitely we should uh, we should do a nice game or two uh, for his birthday uh, this would uh, be his uh, 81st birthday if uh, he was still alive uh, but unfortunately as uh, uh, Tal was the magician on the board uh, he also uh, the way he played was also the way he lived uh, he, he enjoyed a lot of alcohol, a lot of cigarettes, uh, a lot of women, and uh, well, this uh, led to his early downfall at the age of uh, 55. Uh, I believe the, the official medical uh, r report was uh, that he died of a hemorrhage in the esophagus uh, in 1992, some one month after that, uh, that win against Gary Kasparov uh, in that Blitz tournament. Uh, I also have that game on my channel. So you're free to check it out if, if you'd like. Uh, this game here, it was played in 1956. Uh, Mikhail Tal with the black pieces is playing against uh, Janusz Zukšta. And uh, I don't have the slightest idea if I pronounce that name right. Uh, he's a Polish chess player. Uh, in 1953, some three years ago before this game, he won the, the Polish uh, Junior Championship. And he represented Poland in, in a lot of international matches. Uh, but this game uh, he plays against uh, the Pirate of Riga. So let's see uh, how it went. And uh, for those of you who enjoy the King's Indian, uh, this game will be quite a treat. So we have d4 and knight to f6. c4, g6, uh, knight to c3, bishop to g7, e4, uh, d6, uh, f3, the Semish variation of the King's Indian. Uh, Tal castles, bishop to e3, now e5, uh, knight to g2, e2 c6 and queen to b3 uh, all standard theory moves for the king's indian and uh, there are a lot of options for black here one might enjoy knight b to d7 a6 is an option uh, but uh, tal sees the uh, the white king still in the center still <laughs> sitting there on e1 and he immediately uh, wants to open up the center e captures on d4 uh, knight captures on d4 and already on move 9 a very interesting decision by the pirate of riga uh, d5. A pawn sacrifice uh, purely because the king is still on e1. No reason not to do it. Uh, c captures on d5. We have c captures on d5. And uh, here the Polish uh, chess player accepts the challenge. Uh, e captures on d5. And uh, always, uh, I mean, your king is on e1. That's uh, too deadly a dare to give a guy like Tal. Uh, Playing a move like rook to e8 here would definitely give Tal the advantage, pinning the bishop on e3. But rook to e8 is, is a great move, but it's not a pirate move. Uh, a pirate move is <laughs> what Tal played, and Tal played knight to c6. And what is this? I mean, this, is, uh, th this move is so terrible that it's basically just uh, giving white a piece. So naturally white accepts this, uh, d captures on c6, and here we have uh, the immediate rook to e8. So like I said, rook to e8, the previous move would clearly give uh, Tal the advantage, but Tal first gave up a piece, and only then he plays rook to e8, uh, now giving white a lot of options, and uh, this is something that Tal was famous for. So white has to consider a lot of things. Does he capture? C captures on b7. Uh, does he capture the knight on d4, since the bishop is pinned? Uh, rook captures on e3 as a possibility. And definitely the best continuation for white would be uh, castling queenside, allowing rook captures on e3, and then c captures on b7, bishop captures on b7, uh, queen captures on b7, and after a move like rook to e8, uh, Tal would have two rooks in the attack, uh, this bishop on g7 is pretty much ready to be activated, 
uh, eyeing that b2 pawn uh, through the knights so the queen is also ready to jump into the attack uh, but with correct play white shouldn't really have any problems here uh, but unfortunately for the Polish player, uh, after this rook to e8 move, the, he decided not to castle queenside in, he played king to f2, uh, getting the king out of the pin and also protecting the bishop on e3. And uh, this was enough for Tal to immediately, <laughs> to immediately start pillaging. Uh, rook captures on e3. And again here, white has plenty of options. Uh, his knight is still under attack. He can capture the pawn on b7. Of course, he can capture the rook with the king, uh, bringing his king into e3. And I mean, why not? This probably is the best move, uh, but it requires a lot of calculation, and this is something you don't want to go into against uh, a guy like Tal. For example, uh, king captures rook, and then knight to g4 has to be considered and thoroughly calculated. Uh, unfortunately, if you capture the knight, uh, you get queen captures on d4, now with check. Uh, because after knight to g4 check, you opened up this bishop's attack to the d4 pawn. Uh, and after king to e2, uh, bishop captures on g4 might seem like a, like a beast move, but there's an even better move, bishop to h6. Uh, now with the ideas of queen to d2 and queen to e3, bishop to g4 is always here. You don't have to rush it. Uh, white would have to play something like queen to c2. And uh, after a move like bishop to f5, uh, getting the bishop uh, in, into the game with tempo, uh, but what you're actually doing is you're uh, making room for this rook to jump to e8 immediately. And uh, white doesn't have a response here. Uh, capturing the bishop loses immediately to rook to e8. You don't have a square for a king, you have to block it. Uh, you lose the queen. And uh, n no other moves are really even better. I mean... Uh, you have to play something like king to e1 uh, to allow bishop to e2, but then you just lose the queen on c2, so this is completely completely terrible uh, for white. Uh, so after this, a king captures on e3. If you do accept the rook uh, after knight to g4, uh, you can't really capture the knight. You have to play king to e2, and then, well, wh where is this game going for white? This is uh, something white decided not to go for. So after rook to e3, he played rook to d1. Uh, now protecting his knight on d4 and also maybe threatening uh, c capture some b7. Uh, but Tal now immediately jumps uh, right back into the attack. Knight to g4 with check now protecting the rook on e3. Uh, white captured the knight. We have bishop captures on d4. Now threatening some very nasty discoveries like rook captures uh, knight on c3 winning the queen or, or any other discovery will be deadly. Uh, rook captures on d4 and queen captures on d4. Now still threatening uh, all sorts of deadly discoveries. Queen to d5. Uh, white wants to exchange queens now. As if the rook moves, white, white will just grab the queen and everything is, everything is perfect. I mean, white is up a pawn. Uh, but <clears throat> there is one move that uh, white uh, failed to take into consideration. Uh, rook to e2 with a double check. And, uh, well, okay, this is giving up a rook, but this is completely winning for Tal. King captures on e2, uh, pretty much only move. Uh, bishop captures on g4, only now the, does the bishop come into the game uh, with tempo. Uh, king has to go to e1, and now this rook is free to jump to e8. Rook to e8 with check. Uh, bishop to e2, and now, I'm sure you all see it, rook captures on e2. Uh, and in this position, uh, the Polish player resigned the game. Uh, it doesn't matter what he plays, there are two options. If you play king to f1, uh, queen to f2 is checkmate, and if you decide to capture the rook, then the knight is overloaded, he cannot protect the queen anymore. Uh, knight captures rook, and then simply queen captures queen. Uh, white doesn't have anything to hope for here. So after rook captures on e2, white resigned the game, and uh, Yet, yet another brilliant victory for, for the Pirate of Riga, and uh, yet, yet another masterpiece for us to admire. So, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I, will do, I will do another Tal game, since uh, uh, Tal's games are so great. I mean, they're the best. Uh, yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Ar Armin Nadarovic for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. And uh, for this video uh, today, special, I will put a link with all of the tal videos I did uh, 
in a playlist in the description below so you can check out some of my previous uploads uh, if you if you haven't seen them yet. So yeah, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon.